This is the Hustlers Corner. Hello everybody, this is Biko Misura, straight out of Cape Town in South Africa, and welcome to the Hustlers Corner. We go straight to that shop shop sign. I appreciate it if you guys can go click on the count of one, two, three, as my um uh my guest from the previous episode, Gray Javesi likes going. Destroy that like button. Click, 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 click. Thank you so much, guys. Welcome to this episode. We're talking about the rise of the digital entrepreneur. What is entrepreneurship? It is defined in its simplest form as self-employment, basically. Just being independent, relying on yourself, right? But digital entrepreneurship, on the other hand, diverges from this definition, seeing it is it involves entrepreneurial pursuits which occur on a digital platform. Digital entrepreneurs have got a reliance on digital media tools and information technology in the pursuit of entrepreneurial prospects. Digital entrepreneurship ensures when an asset owned by a business, a service performed by a business or a fundamental element of a business has been dig digitized, digital entrepreneurship expands on the traditional notion of entrepreneurship in the sense that it includes a set of participants which is constantly evolving and is highly diverse. This moves away from the traditional established participant to a more ever-changing assemblage of participants who possess their own and differing com competencies, aspirations, and ultimately purposes. And I'm sure you and I have seen a lot of them on the internet. The rise of the digital entrepreneur is here. Everybody has been preaching, 4IR is coming, 4IR is now here. So if you're not becoming a digital entrepreneur or you're not familiarizing yourself with um, digital tools on how you can grow your business online, there's people like this brother that I'm gonna be sitting with here today who can help you maximize your own business prospects online and digital. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome a young man who came to South Africa to pursue his entrepreneurial pursuits and build a business online digitally and is doing incredibly well. He's based right here in Cape Town and is from Zimbabwe. I'd like to uh, present to you, Marshall Malaba. How are you doing, brother? I'm alive and kicking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good too, man. Um, the Hustlers Corner is, you know, we, we like growing the, the, the audience. Okay. You know, people, I don't know who, who's watching, but uh, the type of content we have is a personal development type of content, right? Okay. And, uh, and most of it, we do a lot of interviews. We interview people who have done really well in their businesses, but we just want to know who those people are. But seeing the world is changing, the world is coming in this digital space, and the world has found people like you, or people like you did not just sit back and look at the world evolve in front of their eyes. People like you are like, I'm going to jump into this bandwagon <laughs> and I'm going to go online and build myself yeah. and I'm going to become a digital entrepreneur. And I like the fact that you're a young man and you are in it. We've got a lot of young people out there right now struggling. Mm -hmm. So people like yourself have got the information to help as many people out there as possible. So that's the reason why you're here today. I'm glad to be here. And uh, let, uh, um, that's the most <laughs> talking I'll do on this episode, guys. Let me just start. Um, who is Marshall Malaba? Uh, well, Marshall Malawa is a Zimbabwean-born entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, what made me become an entrepreneur was just following the usual route that everyone goes through. You go to primary, high school, then you're expected to go to university. I did my first year with UNISA, mm -hmm. and then my parents told me, unfortunately, we can't continue fund funding your education. So go look for a job or something if you want to continue, but otherwise we can't help you. So myself, I had this dream of becoming one of the best marketers out there. So I was like, no, I'll, I'll figure this thing out. And you grew up in Zim? Yes, I grew this up in Zim. Zim. Okay. Yeah, this was in Zim, I, in a place called Bulawayo. Oh, I know Bulawayo. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to everyone from Bulawayo. What's up, guys? <laughs> Blues. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so th at that moment in time, it was very difficult for you to find a job. I'm sure you've heard the many stories about the stuff that was happening in Zimbabwe, especially economically. So I had this friend of mine who just invited me, said, no, dude, come and help me to sell my laptops. I will teach you how to sell laptops. I'll teach you how to fix laptops. And then we'll just work together. He was a very good friend of mine from church. And you're all, how old then? I think I was 17, 18, somewhere okay. there. So you, you are literally that generation that grew up under that Zimbabwe that the whole world is looking at as struggling. Exactly. For lack of a better word. For what what was going on? I mean, as a child, as a teenager, how was it? How was it impacting people like you guys who were right in it on the ground? It was really killing us in terms of like um, the template that we are meant to follow. 
you're meant to go to school and study when you've done studying there are meant to be jobs there are meant to be opportunities that are available for you but all that stuff was just eliminated we have got so many graduates so many people graduating every single year but there is nothing for them to do people with degrees are vendors on the streets uh, it's it's crazy it's totally crazy so i was finding myself in that same situation i was forced into entrepreneurship not necessarily to say that i was born an entrepreneur i just knew that i wanted to go into marketing because i used to watch a lot of tv shows where marketers used to wear nice formal suits so i thought that's what it meant to make it in life so i also wanted that but then i was forced to start selling laptops with my friend and um what then happened was we were using the traditional approaches like you print out flyers you go and distribute but we didn't have the money to continue printing and try and compete with other big companies that do what we're doing so i met this guy i don't remember how he was just saying that no i can teach you guys how to do social media marketing for some reason i just believed that it was the future and he had a workshop training i think it was 100 us dollars i remember it was more than i could earn in one month for some reason i went to my mom i convinced her that if you give me this money i'm going to give you back as a thousand dollars i lied to her i cheated her and how long ago was that that was the same the, the same time frame when i was around 19 20 somewhere there okay 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 so she gave me that money and then i went and paid for that workshop where the guy was teaching about social media i really had no clue about what he was talking about but i just had this inclination in me that this is the future and i need to learn it kind of like what i'm going through right now with crypto like i know it's the future and i'm getting in it and i, I just i don't know what's going on the jargon i just it's like i'm in the middle of a big huge bush of africans and i just have to figure it out <laughs> but it's beautiful i think i love such challenges with time i'll figure it out yeah so so you were there and by the way the reason why I'm, I'm 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 chipping in is to encourage you and take this seriously guys it is time for digital currency digital ages here so if you don't wake up now guys you're gonna wake up and find abu mashal seba i'm a billionaire <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like the way you put it and what's funny is like uh like i was saying i was just finding myself drawn to social media and then from the little that i understood i started applying it in the company that my friend invited me to be in after a while our company started growing because i seemed to i don't know what i was doing but it was more than everyone else was doing because social media was a whole new thing at that time until i got to a point whereby uh other companies started noticing that no these guys who are these guys why are they everywhere i was just doing simple things like creating facebook page uh, creating a facebook page and always posting there posting in groups but it was a whole lot more than what everyone else was doing to a point whereby companies started approaching us asking who is doing this for you can you do it for us and they didn't know that it was me to a point whereby i was trying to fund my education but local universities were now calling me to come and teach students about social media marketing and digital entrepreneurship but what they didn't know is that i was learning it from watching youtube videos and and i like the fact that the more you teach the more you learn that's why i mean i don't want to wait until i know crypto to start sharing information with my audience yeah i want to i want to share as i learn and i want to start teaching as i learn do you know what i mean yeah so that was brilliant so you you literally learned through watching youtube videos exactly exactly because like uh one thing i've told myself is we can't fix local problems by always thinking and looking at things the way we've always been taught we have to find other people who have maybe gone through the same problems and they have solved them so most of those people are on youtube a lot of those guys are maybe millionaires or whatever most of them are british and american and we might look at them and say ah these guys what do they know but they have a, another level of thinking that we don't yet have so what I used to do is that I used to always try and focus on and on learning from those guys, learning from the stuff that they were teaching on YouTube and find a way to just apply it uh local. Okay, I mean on the introduction there I sort of tried to simplify it a bit according to your understanding what is digital entrepreneurship? It's 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 similar to traditional entrepreneurship except that you are using digital. By digital we're talking about the use of your phone we're talking about the laptop we're talking about uh the internet one of the things that internet does is that it just allows us to transact information a whole lot faster 
And so when you say that you are a digital entrepreneur, you are just someone who is transacting that information. You have information, you know how it works, and you're presenting it to people who need that information. You're helping them to achieve certain goals through the internet, and then you get paid for that. And that's what we call a digital entrepreneur. Wow, that's beautiful. And then when you start, you're not even aware that you're becoming this entrepreneur. Okay, here you are. They're putting you on the spot. They're asking you to come help them out. And I like the fact that you're like, I'll help you guys out. You, you didn't like, no, I'm also new myself. I know nothing. You literally threw yourself in the deep end. And then tell us the rest of the, rest of the story. Uh, eventually, I then became one of the most sought after. I didn't know I was a speaker. Okay. But then I became a speaker at that time because companies, uh, organizations would always invite me. Can you come and speak? Can you come and teach us on this stuff? And so eventually I started realizing that, okay, actually this is something that I can do for a living. It started giving me ideas of what I really wanted to do. But then also at the same time with the way that things were going negative in Zim, uh, the template I was using was from people who I had learned from online. And the money that they would charge to come and do a talk versus how much I would charge when I'm based in Zimbabwe, it, it just wasn't fitting. So slowly my mind started thinking towards, let me start focusing on just dealing with the local market. Let me start focusing on the international market. Because you can have a particular service and if you approach someone locally and say that this thing costs maybe, let's say, $1,000, to them they'll be like, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah, too much yeah. money. Who do you think <laughs> yeah. you are? That's, that's, that's nonsense. But if you approach someone who is online, who understands the value of what you are doing, yeah. to them they think $1,000 is little money. You are very cheap. Yeah, yeah. So that's how my thinking began to evolve and change. I started becoming someone who was thinking about how can I access online? How can I reach other audiences everywhere and not necessarily the audiences that are local that only focus on the local problems that we have? Yeah. Yeah. Now let's talk about what you do. What does what does your company do online? How do you help people online? How do you run your business? Because I'm sure there's so <laughs> many things to do online. And those are some of the things maybe before the end of this interview or maybe at a later interview or maybe at the bottom of the screen, I can even share his handles. You can go follow him and just find out ways on how you can learn from what he's doing and how it can better your own hustle so you can make money online. But what do you do? Okay, um, I do two things mainly. Okay. Uh, the first one, which is my major breadwinner bread is... My major tool for winning, Brett, you know what I mean, um, is I help people who sell information. I help them to build platforms and then I help them to um, plan out how exactly are they going to distribute that uh, that information or that knowledge. For example, you might find someone who is a coach. Let's say like you, uh, you've done a lot of entrepreneurship trainings and stuff like that. And then you are saying that, okay, I want to reach a market maybe in Australia. I reach out to you and I help you. Okay, first of all, let's package what you want to sell to them i help you to like film videos and stuff like that put it in in video format and then i create a platform for you where your information is going to be hosted and then i plan with you okay what how exactly are you going to reach that market in terms of like uh social media what do you what the things that you need to do in order to get in front of your audience so that you can sell and then they will be willing to actually buy from you so that's the main thing that i do and then Branching off from that, the other thing that I do is I run like an organization that teaches entrepreneurship, but mainly focused on digital. It's actually a platform that I've set up. It's called Yovacity. And basically what you do, what I call ourselves is it's the number one platform where you can learn entrepreneurship. It's the number one platform where entrepreneurs gather to learn about entrepreneurship. So basically... We're still growing, but everything that you'd want to know about how to start a business online, you just simply go there and you watch free courses, you get some paid courses. You just, we're just taking you on the journey of realizing that this is what's actually possible online and then you start doing it. So is it possible for me to be watching this interview right now, not having a clue about how to make money online and start following you uh, and get something that I can, or, or maybe but that's the wrong, wrong way of asking this question. What I want to ask is if I'm watching right now, mm -hmm. like I'm just, I only know DJ Smoo. I yeah. know nothing about the internet, but I've got Wi-Fi and I'm watching this hustler's corner. Yeah. Can you turn such a person to becoming a digital entrepreneur and making money online through what you offer? Exactly. Yes, I can. Oh, okay. Hey guys, here's a solution. <laughs> I send it in you. Come tell us more. Mm. 
uh, yes, I, let me look at the camera and say, yes, I can. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, the reason why I say yes is because it's not necessarily about what you know or what tools you have. It's, it mainly starts with desire. Like w where I am right now, I don't consider myself as someone who has gone far, but I do realize that I have achieved a lot in a small space of time because of the things that I've been access that I have access to. It's mainly because of desire. I just told myself that I don't have any other option. So I have to learn this thing rather than spending my whole day just like I, I do these things, TikTok, you know, Instagram. I, I can spend the whole day just watching stuff and just consuming content. I choose rather to say that, OK, how can I use this tool to actually build income for me? How, what can I do? What can I learn about this tool that I have so that I can better myself? And so just that desire is what makes me then ask the right questions. And then it exposes me to the right information, which then what? helps me to make money mm. so I, I someone once asked me what do you think are some of the challenges that are facing young people there are lots of things like unemployment yes government is not doing enough blah 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 but i one of the things that i say is just that mindset of saying i want to do something and let me figure it out because everything can be figured out if you make the decision that i'm going to just go on the internet and try and figure it out like I'm saying this in what, 2021 and it's what now, it's um, August. I'm going to know cryptocurrency and I'm going to become one of the best teachers in the continent. So awesome. I just want to know that information of financial liberation, you know? Yeah. And go teach it to as many people as possible. Yeah. That's why people like you are very essential because I think the main crux of your business is about serving the people as mm. opposed to actually making money. Exactly. But is there money on the internet? I mean, is there good money? Brother, is lots of money. <laughs> there's lots of money on the internet I, sometimes i get a client who is willing to pay me more money than i have ever dreamed of because i just have the solution to what they want and to them it's it's something small it's just a, one of their businesses one of their side businesses just hey can you help me with this yes this is how much i'll pay you and to me it's like wow god has answered my prayers for him it's just a, a transaction so the internet exposes you to people who are like that. I think one thing that challenges us or brings us back is that we only expose ourselves to people who are on the same level as us. Like maybe you live in a community and everyone has the same problems. So you assume that the whole world is just like that. But in the, there are places that we can only dream of. There are things that people are doing that we can only that we, we, we see in movies and think that this is not real, but it's real. People are actually living like that. And the internet allows you to actually access those people. So I can live a good living making money online just on my laptop or on my cell phone with just Wi-Fi? You can. Wow. You can. And yeah, you're doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so when did, you, when did you come to Cape Town? I uh, moved to Cape Town in 2019. 2019, November. Maybe somebody would ask, and I'm sure you've, ha you've heard this a lot of times. Yeah. Usually you'd expect somebody to start in Joburg. Why Cape Town? Why not Joburg? Mm. Or why not Gaudet? Uh That's a good question because most of my family is actually there. Like I've got brothers there, I've got sisters there. And it, it was expected that, no, you just go there, especially for safety reasons. Like, you know, if you're moving to a new country, you don't know anyone, you want to be close to family. I just asked myself the question, okay, I want to go and start from fresh where is the best place where I would want to build the life that I want? So I looked on the whole map of Africa and the number one destination was Cape Town. I had never experienced a beach before. So I was like, no, well, let me actually go somewhere where there is a beach, where I can walk around with my nice summer shirt. You know, I have this dream. It's a dream of, you know, having a six pack and going to the gym, looking good. It's a dream, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I totally understand you, yeah. Yeah, so... By the beach, even walking, even jogging by the beach, um, bare-chested, bare name Bambo. Yes. But knowing you're okay, you don't have any financial problems, you don't have money problems, you just have to focus on your family and just helping out society. Yeah. You know, we all dream <clears throat> of that type of lifestyle, right? Yeah. So the good part about the internet is that, like, instead of saying, where should I go where the opportunities are, the internet presents opportunities I can work from anywhere. So it's now a question of where do you want to live? Where do you want to work from? And for me, it was just Cape Town. This is the lifestyle that I want. And you've been here for two years. So you literally got here in 2019 and then the lockdown happened. Have you, have you been able to do much? Did it disturb you? Or the lockdown was one of the biggest um, 
but in unexpected <laughs> winners for you or for your industry because we know um everybody literally migrated to to the digital space when we we're locked into our houses yeah in terms of moving around tourism zing stuff yeah it limited me but i had the one of the best years of my life in 2020 because that that whole mindset where everyone was saying that okay now we need to go online who do we know who can help us to do this there is this guy called marshall he's just standing there saying hello i can help you with this so it was really a, a breakthrough year for me so you, you've turned over some good numbers since the COVID 19. yeah so there's a conversation that says a digital entrepreneur is not necessarily an innovator, but a digital innovator is a doer. Yeah. Digital innovation without execution, simply digital. Sorry, sorry, I'm, con I'm confusing myself. The difference between digital innovation and being a digital entrepreneur. Other people are innovators, like I'm sure about Mark Zuckerberg, right? Maybe they created things that some people like you and I are making money with yeah. as entrepreneurs. And it continues to say they're both innovative, both innovative digital entrepreneurship and replicative uh, um, digital entrepreneurship have pros and cons that should be carefully considered. Okay, I'll read this article later, but maybe just to try and summarize it is I would like to encourage people to innovate out there, but Sometimes when we innovate, we're waiting for many years to get this startup off the ground, to go raise money from venture capitals or from whoever, from the government funding institutions yeah. or, from or from interested investors to go raise them. And that's, that's an exercise of many years. People are hungry right now. Yeah. COVID-19 happened and people are hungry right now. Yeah. I don't want to be, an, and, and this is just, I'm not saying me, I don't want to go and innovate and still, I'm hungry now. Yeah. I want to be an entrepreneur now. I want to make money now. Yeah. Is that possible? It's possible. It's very possible. I've heard, I, I learned this from you and I've seen some other people that also, uh, I, I aspire to be like selling. You've got a whole book on selling. I think one of the things that uh, we get stuck in sometimes is, Yes, I want to have this big dream. I want to be an innovator. I want to have this a major company. But while you're on your journey to getting there, there's a tool that you have, which is your mouth. Your ability to reach to someone and convince them to buy something and then they will give you money in exchange for whatever value or thing that you're offering. I think one tool that everyone has right now, regardless of where they are, regardless of whether you have a degree or what your situation is, is that ability to communicate. So I think we should be focusing more on how can I learn to sell something while I'm on my journey to building that innovation or whatever. When you learn how to sell, that's how you get money now. You check? Yeah. That's how we get money now. If I teach myself, if I say that, okay, for one week, I'm going to learn how to sell. And what's funny, I don't know why universities don't teach much about selling. Yeah, yeah. School doesn't teach you anything about selling, but it's the number one skill. Yeah. If I have an idea and I want to approach an investor, I need to learn how to sell my idea. Yeah. If I go for an interview, I need to learn how to sell myself in the interview. Yeah. If I'm approaching a girl, I need to learn how to sell myself. So the answer to almost everything that we have is... Is just selling. So if I want money now, I want money in my pocket right now, maybe just for a day or two, focus on learning how to sell. And then you realize that there are things around you that you actually can sell that will bring money to you. Mm, and I like the fact that online you can sell digital products. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be your products. Exactly. Not everybody has to be a Steve Jobs, a Mark Zuckerberg, a Theo Baloi from Batu, or a DJ Spoon, a Mofa. You don't have to be that, an yeah. innovator or, or a creator. But you actually can be an entrepreneur and sell other people's products, right? Exactly. So what is the shortest time that you've trained a person to make money in? Any uh, one of your students? It was seven days. Seven days? Yes. you got to be kidding me. It was seven days. Oh, wow. And what's funny is that he made more money than I was making in a month. He made it in a day. you got to be kidding me. I'm dead serious. Well, what's the most amount of money your client has made who's come back to you to give you a testimony and say, thank you for training me. Thank you for showing me these ropes online. This is how much money I've made so far. 103 million US dollars. Oh, no, man. No, man. No, man. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm serious. That's a billion rands, bro. 
one of my clients based in the United States. Um, she's a very prominent speaker. She deals with a lot of gender-based things, women's rights, blah, blah, blah. She's also a bit of a political figure. So she had all this information and knowledge, but she just did not have the tools to get it in front of people and then monetize. So she then just approached me, luckily, not because I'm special or anything, but luckily she just said, I need help with this. And to me, because it's what I do, I was very clear on what she needs to do. She did a launch within three months. She had made 103 million. Wow, bro. And I kicked myself. Wow. Because she asked me, how much is this going to cost? And me with my African mentality, I went there <laughs> very humbly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes you never know with clients, right? Yeah. I, I, I touched it. It's not even a percentage of, of what you made. That is beautiful. And, 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 and that's why, I mean, one of my recent um, interviews, and that's why I'm using this platform, The Hustler's Corner, yeah. to now start shifting towards digital entrepreneurs like you guys. Because yeah. I can see where the country is. We've just had lootings happen a couple of weeks ago in, in South Africa. People are hungry. Yeah. So instead of saying, be innovators, like... Or, or go to school, or that's fine. Those messages are fine, but people are hungry right now. So what I've done, I've just had an interview with a cryptocurrency trader and is also an online investor. Okay. Uh, and a cryptocurrency investor, amazing guy. Um, his name is Gray Jabesi. Okay. He runs a platform called Hardcore Crypto. He che teaches people on cryptocurrency. Okay. So we've just formed officially a partnership with the Hustlers Corner and Gray Jabesi's institution called um, Crypto University. Okay. We will be having days on the Hustlers Corner where Gray is going to be partnering with us to teach people about cryptocurrency. Wow. So I want to propose a similar partnership with you because I'm trying to identify all these different people to form all these different partnerships. This one can teach us about crypto. This one can teach us about that. This one, but all of these people are teaching us new ways of making money online on okay. the internet. Yeah. Those are the people that I'm trying to bring here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe it's a conversation we can have offline, but I think a person like you can be very useful on a platform like this to partner with us on an ongoing basis. For those who want more information, they'll then migrate to your platforms and follow you and register and whatever, learn from you. But what I want is somebody like you who's as humble as you are and who's so um, easily approachable, who doesn't seem intimidating to anyone and just from time to time share information about how people out there can become digital entrepreneurs and make money now not next year not when ramaphosa opens not when no now yeah can we do that is that something you can think about i don't have to think about it i'm in <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna teach me to make a hundred million dollars as well <laughs> i didn't make a hundred million dollars no, 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 i understand yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, I get it. are you yeah. serious yeah no and i'm saying are you saying yeah? is that a yes that's a yes definitely yes uh, i i appreciate i appreciate the gesture guys because I'm always arch, and I'm also even here in Cape Town on, on, on business reasons. And this is one of the most biggest reasons for me to come up with ways on how to help people out there. That's why I'm in Cape Town. So just for, for him saying yes, I'm starting to smile because I can imagine the amount of things we're going to do together and the content we're going to create <laughs> and so much education that you guys need to make money out there. If you were to say anything to somebody who wants to make money right now as a form of encouragement, even to other entrepreneurs who are watching, what would you like to say to them out there? Um, like DJ Spoo was saying, it doesn't have to be your idea. There's this concept that I teach, which is called drop, serv drop servicing, which is simply connecting people who have got services to people who need services. So what you do is that you just figure out how can I get people who need help with something and they've got money to pay. How do I connect them to people who are actually able to deliver that service? I don't have to learn how to do it. For example, someone needs a website. I don't have to learn how to do web design. I just need to learn how to connect to those people. So it goes back to what we we're talking about, talking about earlier on about learning how to sell. It's just communicating. If you know someone who needs this and you know someone who can deliver this, you then can put a markup and say that, um, I, my company or I will do this thing for you. And those people, because they want solutions now, they want help now, they are willing to pay. It's one thing that was a breakthrough in my life where I realized that I don't have to be the one who does it. You know, there's this mentality that we sometimes have that it must be me. I must be the one, you know, with the keys, with the knowledge, everything. It doesn't have to be. You just need to simply learn how to connect people 
who have got the skills to the people who need the services. And that's one area that can really change our lives. What are the figures I can start making if I'm a, if I'm a slow learner? Say I'm, I'm a slow learner, I don't grasp things quickly. If you're saying anyone can learn what you're teaching online, how much money I can make if, or let's say I'm a slow learner, how long can it take me to grasp the basics of what you can teach me? And how much money I can start off making maybe at least. Can, is it possible to make a thousand rands a day even when I'm still new learning? Sorry, maybe let's talk dollars. Is it possible to make that or, you know what I mean? Yeah, I actually love talking in dollars. Uh, the lowest level that I try and teach the people who approach me is how to make your first 1,000. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> well, now you are the right one. <laughs> so you can teach somebody to make their first thousand dollars online. Yeah. Wow, bro, you're the correct, you're the perfect person. These are the type of people I'm looking for here in Cape Town, all over the country, all over the world, to come and teach us how to make money online. So I can come and learn from you and start making a thousand dollars a month online. Yes, you can. A thousand that's fifteen K, bruh. You don't have to go stand in a taxi <laughs> rank. You don't have to go. <laughs> it's 15K. Wow, minimum. Yeah. It depends on their commitment, right? Yes, it, it depends on their commitment. If you are looking for a get-rich-quick scheme, it's definitely not this. You are in the, you're knocking on the wrong door. But if you're, if you're someone who is willing to work, willing to learn, willing to try and fail, but wake up tomorrow morning and say, I'm going to try again, then the, the, the sky is the limit. It's a similar mindset that you need ordinarily as an entrepreneur out there. Exactly. It's a similar mindset to approach the online hustling, right? Yes. Oguti, I want to know this. I'm going to dedicate myself. I'll commit and I'll do it daily until I figure it out. So that's the spirit they should come with. Yes. Okay. I'm very proud of you, my brother. Before I let you go, though, another um, issue that I've been a victim of is scammers. There's a lot of people online, even in crypto. I mean, I was speaking to Greg Jabez. We spoke a lot about people who lie mm -hmm. to people and end up taking people's money. Even when I was interviewing guys here on the Hustlers Corner, I was interviewing. Go check it out, that episode. Um, Cashflow Ngobo. Okay. Um, he's a Forex trader. He was telling us about that as well. We spoke about it. Yeah. A lot of people lie to people. They take people's money. They scam people. What are some of the things that I should be aware of to be careful of such people or institutions on the internet or what are some of the things that i'm not meant to do to end up finding myself where my credit card details have been taken my money my bank account is getting cleaned out or i've given my money to scammers i mean what are some of the advices that you share to people like us who are new on the internet as far as um security and safety is concerned okay uh especially in terms of investment there's this saying that's there in the entrepreneurship world online is if it sounds too good to be true, chances are that 99% it's too good to be true. A lot of people fall into scams firstly because a great opportunity has been presented to you and it's, it's so amazing, it's so great, but it sounds too good to be true. Chances are very high that it's actually too good to be true. So try and firstly slow down and investigate the opportunity most of these guys who come in they're scammers is always an issue of now you have to do this thing now otherwise you're going to miss the opportunity pay this put this money here blah 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 and secondly uh it's usually no work at all someone will just tell you no give me 100 us dollars i'll give you as ten thousand after one week how and what work am i doing whether we like it or not yeah we all like free things we all like uh nice things that just happen but that's not the world that we live in money flows to wh when there's work that is done also if you look at like what the, that word investment in itself it's always a long-term thing it's not a short-term thing so we then need to consider that other things that you can also look at is like for example if someone is approaching you saying that they can help you with something do research about that person most of these guys they reach out to you maybe on instagram like let me just use the forex example i believe in forex trading i used to do it myself i didn't i, I stopped because i found what i'm doing but i know it, it works right i know it's a legit business most of the people who try and scam you are people who are into forex he will tell you that he can make this amount of money he's reaching to, out to you on instagram he's got zero followers he's got no images no posts nothing and he's just telling you he can make this money 
you have got no evidence that this is a real human being but you want to invest he's got no followers there's nothing check the track record okay if this is a company let's go to their social media what are people saying about this company do they have social media profiles there's a website i invite people to go to it's called uh, scamadvisor.com you can simply go there and take a url of any website and post it there and then you will see some results that they will show you about what people are saying about that website so if it's a scam there are always people online who will start saying that no this one is a scam this is what happened blah 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 it's just you simply taking the time to slow down and then do some research before you just jump in and invest your money thank you so much mr marshall malawa i appreciate your time my brother hello everybody this is marshall malawa and i've just been hustled by dj Swu on the hustlers corner so here's one quick question how do you make your first one thousand dollars online by simply using a laptop or a mobile phone if i was you this is what i would do there's this concept which is called drop servicing what you simply do is that you look for opportunities online for example you look for people who are looking for particular services right they don't know where to find those services you then go and look for people who are able to offer those services your simple job is to simply connect those people who need the services to the ones who are able to provide the services you are simply a middleman connecting people online just to give you a quick example we all know that we are living in the days of the pandemic so many companies are trying to go online as fast as possible they need websites some companies are running maybe clothing stores they need online stores but they have got no clue on how exactly to create an online store you can go to a simple website like fiverr.com or freelancer.com or people per hour and you can hire a freelancer who will build an online store for that person but you approach that person and you tell them that you can set up an online store for them you give them a very particular price which is based on the research that you would have done by asking the freelancer how much does he charge for example he can charge maybe five hundred dollars you go to the client and then tell them that i will charge you one thousand five hundred dollars to build the online store now look at this this person is desperate to have an online store because why if they don't go online they're going to lose business so they are willing and they are able to pay you that money and you don't have to be the one who actually does the job you simply maybe receive part of the payment then you go to the freelancer and you tell him what he needs to do based on the client's requirements the freelancer does the job whether it's one week or maybe one month whatever the time frame and then you come back to the client and say here is the job that you asked me to do the client finishes the whole payment you get your money the freelancer gets your their money everybody's happy that's how to make your first one thousand dollars online all right so maybe you're thinking this sounds way too good to be true and you'd actually need someone to help you and walk you through this i'm actually available you can follow me on social media you can find me on youtube you can find me on linkedin and especially on instagram that's marshall malaba just simply search for me and i'll show you how to make your first one thousand dollars online it doesn't have to be difficult guys you just need to have the right template and the right person to show you how i want to show you how let's go